Okay, so well, today we'll be going over kind of what the CBS is, why you need to take it, um, basically how they score it, um, and how to understand, understand your score and when you receive your scores, also general suggestions for preparations. And I posted a little bit of practice problems so y'all can kind of get used to what it looks like um, and how you'll be taking it. Um, so the first thing, I mean, I, I didn't put this up here, but the reason why you need to take CBES is for subject matter, um, sorry, for it's a basic skills requirement for the CTC. Um, and so a lot of um, anybody going into the education kind of like sometimes counselors, some counselors need to take it, all teachers need to take it. And it's just a basic skills requirement test. Um, there's also different ways to meet this requirement. And I actually didn't put the um, other ways, but um, there is different ways of meeting, um, sort of, you can use your SAT scores, ACT scores, ELM scores. So there's a lot of different ways. Um, if you have any questions about that, uh, feel free to email us and we can help you figure out if you can get exempt from this test. Um, so um, a little bit about the scoring. So you need a total of 123 to pass the actual entire test. What the 123 is consisted of is actually adding up your three sections of the CBES, which is reading, writing, and math. Um, and so what you add up all the scores, so you get individual scores, and at the end you add these all up. So the lowest score you can get on one of the subtests, um, either reading, math, or writing, is a 37, as long as the other two um, scores as long as all three of them together add up to 123 and it's a little tricky um, but again we can help you if to understand your scores if you do need that help um, it is a little tricky to say I know sometimes a lot of students ask me like oh well there's 50 questions so does that mean I have to get like 33 30 something right it's a little tricky to say because their scoring scale is from a 20 to an 80 so it's a little tricky to really know how, exactly how many questions you have to get right based on 50 questions that they give you, multiple choice. Um, but um, just your scoring just has to be a total of 123. Um, another important thing is that if you don't pass one or more sections when retaking, you only have to retake that test that you didn't pass. For example, let's say you passed reading and writing, but you didn't pass math, your next time around, you will only be taking the math portion and vice versa. If you didn't pass the reading, but you passed writing and math, you will only have to take reading. So it's only, you only retake what you didn't pass. Obviously, if you didn't pass all of it, you can, you will be taking the whole test again. Um, Marila, did I miss anything? Uh, no, um, she pretty much hit everything on um, the dot. The only thing is that, like she had mentioned before, the scoring is a little tricky, um, but as long as you have a 37, which is your lowest, anything else pretty much has to be higher than the 37 in order for it to add up to be 123. So you could have a 37 in math, but have like a 41 and like a 42 in writing, right, and reading. So you'll you'll be at a passing level as long as you don't get anything below a 37 on any of the three tests. Correct. Um, is there any questions also, if you uh, feel free to stop me or send any questions on the chat, I, I'll be able to see them. Does anyone have any questions about the scoring? I have a question. You mentioned that if we don't pass one of the subtests, we will have to only retake that one. Does mm -hmm. that also change the price or, or will it still be like a hundred? It's still the same price. So that's the only kind of um, downside about it is regardless of, just for CVS, but regardless of what like section of the test you take, you have to take the full price of the whole test because technically the whole test is um, based on reading, writing, and math. Okay, thank yeah. you. Thank you for asking that. Okay, so basically how to register and um, I think I'll go through also the website so you can get familiar about the CTC website. So I think due to the current news, it's only computer based before it was offered uh, both paper based and computer based but because of the school districts being closed and the universities. Um, right now it's computer based. Um, 
I think um, depending on the area, there is some that are open, um, but there is a lot of measures. And I think you can, um, there is more information on the CTC website about um, how to register for these. You do have to make an account uh, through the CTC credentialing examinations website. Um, it's a lot of like survey questions before you register. Um, and then um, you basically, the, through the website, you register, you choose your date, you choose your time. And then after you take the test, it will take two, uh, about two to three weeks to get your scores for the CBEST. Um, and I believe you have to wait 45 days after um, getting the, is it getting the results? Um, uh, yeah, so you, you, 45 days from when you received your passing or non-passing score. Yeah. And then you can register again to take um, that, whatever part of the test you need to register for. Yes. Is there any questions on how to register for the CVEST? No. Okay. So some quick little strategies. Um, I think um, just prepare and study before, beforehand. Um, get familiar with the practice test. And again, I'll show you where all that is located. Um, from my past experience of taking the CVEST and um, studying or helping students to tutor for it, um, the practice test online through the CTC website is very similar to the actual test. I think it's one of the most similar ones. Um, the questions are very similar. The type of format it is, it's very, very similar. So if you kind of understand that one, um, then you'll be fine. And there's other options that and I'll show you kind of like what other strategies you can use. So be positive, right? Come with preparation. Obviously, you want to look at the test. You don't want to just go into the test without really knowing what they will ask you about. Um, another big thing, you know, start with um, the, your strengths. They're easy to difficult uh, because it is a four-hour test. Um, so you have four hours to take reading, math, and writing. You get to choose how you want to split that up, right? If you want to start with math, if you want to start with writing, at the end, it's up to you. Um, but you want to do um, your easy to difficult, like start with your strengths just because you don't want to run out of time. Uh, again, so you have 50 multiple choice in reading, 50 in math, and then you have two um, essays as well. And we'll talk about kind of those formats as well. Um, you know, pre test routine, as they have always told us in high school and stuff, you know, rest and nutrition for sure. I think most, depending on the time you take it, but sometimes it is in the morning. Um, so I actually got this from the website again, and I will show you where that is. And I just wanted to show you all kind of a little bit of what they expect. Um, and this is part of the reading portion. Um, so like comparing contracts, making predictions, recognizing language in the tone, um, so making relationship between ideas, um, drawing conclusions, using content clues. So this is very similar to um, tests that we could take in high school that we have, uh, very similar to that format. Understanding the headings, your index organization, tables and charts that they give you. And I'll show you kind of like what that looks at as well. Um, is there any questions for the reading portion? I don't know if you wanted to add anything, Mariela, to. Um, no, the reading portion, like she said, it's pretty straightforward to what is asked for um, on the CTC. Um, and the reading is one of the more length, lengthier ones, just because some of the passages um, that they ask you to read are a little bit long. So um, just one thing for the reading preparation, in, in my personal experience, I took a little bit longer on the reading portion. Um, just because of the whole having to reread if I didn't understand the question. Um, so I wanted to mention that during the exam, if you are not fully sure of your um, response or 100% sure if you think you got the right answer, you can always flag that question and then move on to the next question. Um, because if you spend a little too much time on one specific reading portion question, you're gonna realize that you're gonna run out of time um, and you may not be able to finish whether it's like the math or the reading. So um, just a strategy for the reading part is just, you know, read it and try to answer whatever question or whatever answer you believe 
is correct to your knowledge. And then if you don't feel confident, flag that question and then just move on. And at the end, if you have the time, you can always go back and review those questions that you have flagged. Um, but I just know a lot of students, that's one thing that, you know, they get stuck um, because the, the, often the questions are a little lengthy in reading and they have to, you know, take their time to understand it. But that's just one strategy that you guys can keep in mind when it comes down to the reading uh, portion of the exam. Yes. So the next one is for math. Um, so this is what they break it down into. They break it down to estimation, measurement, and statistical principles, computation and problem solving, numerical and graphic relationships. So I think the main question um, I get from students is kind of like, what math level do I need to know for this? And it's, um, I think, uh, up to algebra. So it doesn't really go into depth about what is algebra. I think even they, um, the, the algebra that they consider is um, finding like the unknown, finding the equation. So solving equations, um, very simple. That's as far as algebra will go. So you wanna think about percentiles, a lot of ratios that they are heavy on percentiles, ratios, proportions, um, as well as uh, probability. That is one of the big ones in statistical. Um, you know, adding, multiply, and divide, obviously, you know, whole numbers, negative numbers, decimals. Um, so, and again, we can go into depth about what we, like what kind of problems that is after I show you kind of like the practice problems that we have and the one online as well. Um, but these are some of the things that you want to think about when you're preparing for the CBEST math. Um, so yeah, is there any questions on this, on the math portion? And again, just like Mariela said, you are able to flag questions and come back to them. Specifically for math, you know, I, as a um, math person, I would say um, just try your best. Do the ones that you know. You know, there are some problems that are a little bit faster, take a little uh, faster to do than others. And you do not have a calculator for the math section. Um, you don't have crazy kind of numbers, but you know, some of them do have long division, log multiplication. So you just want to be aware of um, time management for the math because I know math is different for everyone and, and sometimes it's not everyone's favorite subject like mine, but um, it can definitely um, be a little tough because you, you are kind of handling a lot of three subsets to just do the math portion is a little bit tough. So just kind of time consumption was something that you want to, you know, take in consideration. Um, but yeah, so is there any other question? I don't know if there was any questions for the math portion. Okay, we'll move on to writing. So again, I got this off the website as well. Um, so the specifications they want for the writing portion is to write with clarity, to keep the writing focused, to develop the ideas in writing through support or illustration, and to use the conventions of standard written English, and so on, so on. So that's their specific um, things that they are looking for in your essay. And then the topic uh, specifications are very specific. So these, um, there's different prompts. Um, every test has a different prompt but they will always have these two topics, which they mention. So the type one of the topics that you have, because again, you have two, um, is a, a sample of expressive, I think I can't really see it, oh, sorry. Of um, expressive writing about a remembered experience. Um, and type two is topics should elicit a sample of expository writing that will permit the examinees to demonstrate the analytical skills. So I will tell you personally um, from what I what I remember when I took my CBIS, one of my, my one of my topics was writing a letter to a principal or to a superintendent about a problem going on at the school, and my second topic was naming a time in history that has affected me either positively or negatively, or a person in history that I can identify with that kind of supported me or some, in something in that sort. So what I tell students is think about like a personal topic that they will ask you about. And another one is gonna be maybe like a social issue, something going around in a school, which is kind of like the most common topics. Um, I don't know if you wanna, if you remember yours, Mariela, if you wanna mention about like your topics. 
Um, yeah, so one for my type one topic, it was about um, ebooks, right? Whether I agreed whether ebooks were something, you know, that should be implemented in education. And one thing that I wanted to add about the type um, of the writing prompts is that they, on type one, they want you to choose a side. So they, they, when it says like on the top on um, number two, keep the writing focused. It, it, in that aspect, what they want to see is that you're choosing one side of the argument and you're staying with that side, right? So if I, for example, said, I don't think eBooks are, um, you know, effective. And then I wrote my reasons why they were not effective, but I never went, I never like, touched on the on the positive side of ebooks i strictly stuck to i disagree and this is why so that's one thing for sure that i know that they look for in type one essays um and for type two i believe it was something um it was about writing about an experience of one of my elementary teachers and how my experience with that teacher um what had like a positive or a negative impact on me. It was a more like personal um, type of two question, but it's still the same thing. You you want to keep, you want to choose a reason as to whatever the prompt is asking you and make sure you stick to that reason only and not go back and forth with like yes and no. So it's like you just stick to one side and you write about that side um, without trying to explain other reasons that have to do with maybe like you know, I believe that, you know, she, my fourth grade teacher was a good teacher, but she also didn't do this. So that's kind of going like between the positives and the negatives. So you just want to stick to one side because uh, that's one of the main elements that they look for in the writing um, for the CBEST I've learned. Yeah, that's good. Yeah, yeah. Um, and then also um, lengthwise, you don't have a lot of space. You don't have a lot of um, you, it's not like unlimited space to write your, um, essay. I didn't take it. I took my paper base so I can tell you, um, physically it was about two sheets of paper front and back for one essay. Um, so you don't have a lot of space and, and even for, I'm guessing for the computer base, it's a, there's a limit to how much yeah. you can write. So, so that's kind of why they say write with clarity and keep focus because you don't have a lot of space or time to keep on writing. So, you know, you're not really like doing a whole like 10 page essay. Like I think you want to limit to maybe two or less than two pages. Yeah, they give you on this, on the CBEST writing, I believe you have a thousand, uh, it might be a thousand to a thousand two hundred words for the first one. And then for the second essay, you have about, I think, 600 words. So the first essay is intended to be a little bit longer um, than, the, than the second essay. Um, and again, like Lupita said, the, the limitations are there for a reason, right? So if you have you know, a limitation of words, um, it's because they want you to be concrete and precise to the point. Um, and so they limit you on that aspect, which is another element of what they look for to see if you can write these types of essays. Um, so yeah, and I think it's like about a thousand for the first one, somewhere around there. A thousand, a thousand, three hundred. Yeah. Is there any questions for the writing portion? Okay, we'll go ahead and move on. So the next, um, so these are some study materials that we recommend to students. Obviously, the first one is the CBEST um, through the CTC website, and I can show, again, I can show you all of that. Uh, second one that we have is Teacher's Test Prep. Um, they actually have a lot more than just CBEST. They have CSET in there. They have a lot of different ones. Another one that um, I recently started looking into is Pocket Prep. Um, they have a lot of practice tests, and they are free for students. Um, so you can definitely, like, I'm not sure if you have to create an account, but you can definitely use that. We also have books. We have plenty of books that students um, can um, obtain. So we, we rent, we check them out, you rent them out. Um, because of everything right now, it would be more of like, you let us know if you need a book, and we will make sure someone is there in the office so you can come and pick it up. Um, so if you are thinking if you want a book, um, you can definitely email us. Um, 
and obviously us, right? We tutor. So I am one of the math tutors and um, Mariela can help you with reading and writing as well. We have plenty of other students that can help you with the CBS. And we are doing tutoring through Zoom. Um, it is not in person, it is through Zoom. So we are, uh, um, we, you can use us as a resource. Again, I, we talked about our experiences. So we both know what they are looking for, um, kind of what to expect and what questions you know, um, to look for. So just let us know, our email is right there. Um, and you can just let us know like, hey, I was in the workshop or hey, I've talked to Karina and like, I really need help. And we for sure will email you that same day to set up a Zoom meeting with you. Um, so we can kind of practice more about the CBES. So I wanted to show you some of like, kind of the, the format of what you will be looking at in the um, CBES. So I'll show you that. And if you all would like, I can also show you the website to get familiar with it, how to access the practice test and everything. Um, so something, this is something that you will get for reading. Um, I, it looks a little bit different on, if it's a computer based way because you have the options to click. Um, but you can already see this is pretty lengthy and I actually picked one of the short, shorter ones. So um, the passages can be very, can be very lengthy like Mariela had mentioned. Um, and so it, you, again, time management is probably um, the one thing you wanna focus on. Um, and I can show you that if they actually kind of help you with that because they give you a timed practice test that you're able to work on so that you can kind of know like how long you're taking it on each test. Um, so you can see this is kind of like what they will ask you. This one specifically is asking you about sentences, um, your opinion rather than a fact, so things like that. These are kind of like um, the questions you'll be asked for in the reading portion. For the math, again, something like this, um, there is a couple of word problems which can be tough. Um, so, you know, you want to look at this as probability. So it asks you a lot about um, all of that. And then for the writing portion, this is one of the topics that they have online. Um, so this one's talking about um, difficulties, um, teacher, student, um, lack of interest in the subject field. So something like that. So this is um kind of i would say one of your personal ones you're talking about um how to um handle a situation right so this is a little bit more personal of how you would handle a difficulty like this maybe in your classroom or how you have experienced it before or how a teacher experienced it so you're talking about a memory you're talking about something that either you experienced or you saw basically so this is kind of how the topic will be um so that's kind of what we have. Um, is there any questions right now of kind of like what else to expect for CBEST? Um, something that we might not have mentioned. If you guys ever, you know, have any questions or you might think of a question later on, uh, you guys are free to email us. And like Lupita said, we are pretty quick to answer um, email. So if you guys have any questions, um, you guys can send us an email and we'll be there to help. Yeah, so our email again is just edeq at csus.edu. And um, I will actually kind of show you how to get on that website. Um, that way y'all can access it. Um, again, you, it's free, all of you can um, see that. So if you actually, um, I have the, I have it up right here, but if you actually were just to Google CTC um, exams, um, it would be the first one that comes up. Um, and it kind of has an explanation right now of what's happening. If you go to prepare, um, it actually gives you all the tests, right? Um, C, C best, there's C best, and there's all the C sets. Um, so if you go on C best, it's gonna, it's gonna take you to the website where I kind of showed you, right? So what is the introduction? What is, what do they look for in the math and the reading and the writing? Um, and there's two ways of uh, taking the practices. So one way, is and it's going to take me to a pdf format um 
Is it loading? Let me see. No one doesn't want to show me. Oh, I think that's the interactive one. So there's a PDF format, which you'll see here. Um, and it has kind of like, you can print this out and you can take the, um, the test yourself and grade yourself, right? It's going to be the whole practice test. It has 50 um, multiple choice questions which you, which you can practice from. Um, and then they have that for reading, math, and writing. Again, the writing portion. I think they, if you do the PDF version, they kind of give you like what they would give you. So again, if, as you can see, it's only two pages for each essay. So it's not a lot. Um, if you were to take it paper based, you know, your writing has to be not super big. But um, I want to see if I could. Okay, so it will let me. So the cool thing about the interactive one that I'm about to show you right now is that they actually time you so that um, you can kind of, this will be a good like time management um, practice. Um, let's see if it goes through for some reason, I can't really scroll. Okay, so as you can see, this is the math portion. So this is how the practice test would be. This is actually how your um, computer-based testing will be. And if you look up here, it gives you the questions. There's 50 questions. This one specifically gives you three hours to take. Um, I wouldn't really, again, this would be three hours only for the math. So just kind of take into consideration that you have four hours to take all um, the three portions of the test. So you have four hours to take reading math and the writing portion. This one doesn't give me kind of the option to, to flag like Mariela mentioned, but I could go next and then come back to it. I think at the very end, before you submit, it will ask you um, if you would like to submit um, all of them, even if the ones that are unanswered. So those are, again, this is kind of like what you want to get familiar with. Um, again, register is up here. That's exactly where you would go to register um, the test information, which I kind of talked to you about that. Um, so you want to get familiar with this one, kind of get, um, Practice this one and then again for sure you can also use the other different resources that I talked about. I'm not sure if I did you want to add something but I wasn't sure if I missed something. Um, no, I think we're good. I just I want to emph emphasize um, the importance of the practice test because um, a lot of the things that are on this test may be material that you haven't really seen or worked on. Um, in a couple of years, unless you're maybe uh, a liberal studies major, then you probably will have seen all this um, in your courses. But um, for example, for me, I was a sociology major, so nothing to do with, you know, the math part. So I hadn't taken math in uh, quite a bit of time. So I practiced and practiced the math portion because I already knew that I needed to brush up on my skills for math. So I did several preparation tests um, before actually registering for the exam. And I, I looked at my strengths and my weaknesses of each section. So for example, um, me personally in math, the statistics proportion and probability part were the one where I scored the lowest. So I knew that that's where I had to start, um, you know, practicing more of those type of questions. And then for the reading, same thing. Um, it tells you, you know, which it, it tells you which area of focus the reading part also has, and as well as with the math. The writing is a little bit more different because there isn't really a grading scale that um, they can give you because there isn't anybody to really grade your practice test. But that's what we are here for, the peer mentors. Um, I've actually helped a lot of students with the CVS writing. And um, a lot of the tutors that I've, uh, a lot of the students I have tutored always pass the writing portion based off the type of information that I'm give, that I give to them. So I'm here too, if you guys want to write the practice test and then email me your practice test, I can read over them and then, you know, help with uh, whatever I feel may have to be, um, I guess, addressed a little bit better or whatever it may be. So we're all here for that. We have, you know, Malupita is really good with the math. Um, and then, you know, I'm here for the reading and writing. We have other tutors as well that can help with all the other materials. Yeah, so that's kind of what we wanted to give. It's just kind of an overview of 
what the CBEST is, what you need to expect. Um, and um, basically that's all. Again, I put up our email again. I would write it down. Um, you can email us any questions. I know sometimes students don't really want to go through the Zoom. So they send me problems um, through an email. They send me a picture of a problem. I can also do that, right? Like, how do you do this problem? I'm stuck here. I can also email you back kind of like a step-by-step -step of how to do it. Um, I know actually YouTube also has the practice tests and videos. Um, I don't really know. It just depends on, I think, you as a person and how you study. I know not everyone studies the same. And that's why we say, you know, come to tutoring because we know that not every student learns the same. Uh, but there is that option as well. There is YouTube. Um, a lot of students kind of tell me, like, I don't know how they explain it. Can you do it? So um, it's just kind of up to you. But that is another resource. YouTube um, has helped a lot of students. I know Natalie, one of our other pre mentors, said that it helped her in her CSET. So there's a lot of resources um, which you can use. So just let us know, email us, and uh, we can definitely send that information over. Um, I don't know if anyone has questions or would like to like just have specific questions about CBEST, one of the problems, something in general. No? Okay. So um, again, thank you all for coming and um, being there for the workshop, again, email us if you have any other questions. I know sometimes it's a little hard and I don't feel super comfortable asking through Zoom. So feel free to email us right now. We'll be available to help you in all the questions you have. Okay, so I hope everyone has a great day. Thank you for coming. Um, the, this Later this week, so tomorrow, um, if any of you are um, in the multiple subject program or joining the multiple subject program, tomorrow we have um, this First subset, subset one, which is English and history. Am I right, Marila? Yes. So uh, yeah, it's the English and history portion. Okay. So we tomorrow we will have English and history. On Thursday we will have math and science, and Friday will be subset three, which is physical education, human development, and visual performing arts. Right? Okay. So I got it right. So um, stick, uh, we can send you that email as well, and um, it will also be on our social media. So the links are all there. Okay. So have a great day, everyone. Thank you for coming. Thank you. Bye bye.